Welcome to the program and thanks for choosing Ultra. I'm David LaCroix. We're building the 350 Turbo Red Max Street and Strip unit today. We've shipped hundreds of these transmissions over the years to customers all over the country. And we've never had a complaint. We put a lot of parts into these, so we're gonna we're custom building one today for a customer. So we're gonna share how we build these units at Ultra. Let's get started. Well, let's disassemble the unit we're gonna build. This is a mid 70s 350 turbo, has a universal bolt pattern, fits Buick, Chevy, Olds. I don't build these top to resell these extra lugs, they get in the way of the headers on some vehicles. We're going to be building this unit for a 68 Chevelle, so it's going to be built a Chevrolet top, so we're going to use a, a different case, a Chevy case. This case is damaged, it has a piece broke out of it, but we just want the internal components out of it. So we're going to get started, and the first thing we're going to do is remove the governor. So we're going to take the clip off, pop it out, take a hammer, and remove the cap. Just going to tap it. We don't want it to hit in one spot, we'll bend the cap. So just go around it in different places. Moving the governor first, just give it a twist motion. Looking at it, we're going to replace this governor with a new governor, but we want to check the bore inside to make sure it don't have damage. If that's worn, then you need another case. We're not using this case, but that's just something to look for because you don't want to go through the whole process to clean a transmission, get it all ready to rebuild, then discover that your governor bore is worn out, and then you're starting over again. So let's go ahead and get the Speedo gear out. Some of this is metric, some of it's standard. The 10 millimeter clip holds it in. Take a pair of ice grips. Be careful, don't get on the threads. Lock on, just wiggle it. Pops right out. Speed armor comes out to put a seal in. We'll go through this when we reassemble the unit. Okay, before we pull our extension housing off. We're going to go ahead and get our rear seal out with a seal pulley. It's hard to get out if you take it off. No way to hold it. We got that out of the way. Now we're going to pull the extension housing off. I removed all the bolts but one. 9 16. Pull it off. We got our speedometer gear which is, you can see this, uh, there's a clip. The clips came off. This clip retainer will go over how it's installed. Usually just slides off. Sometimes you've got to take a hammer, tap it lightly, pulls right off. And this will go either way, it doesn't matter. It's not directional. So we'll get our modulator valve out of the way. That is a half inch. Take the retainer off. Use a magnet, pull the modulator pin out. This only goes in one way, it's bigger on that end, so you really can't get that confused. Now our intermediate accumulator servo. I'm gonna get it out. Got a snap ring, holds it in. You will just want to take a small screwdriver, get in behind it. Pop it out. Walks right out. Reach in, pull it out. We're getting everything off the outside of it first. Spin it on around. Uh, we got eight pump bolts. They're half inch. I took them all but one out to save time on the video. And it, we're gonna we're gonna use a new pump body and gears. But, if you're just rebuilding the transmission, it's a good time to get the seal out now. Because if you've got it out of the holder, it's hard to hold the pump, pull the seal. And again, these are half inch. So we've got one bolt left in there. Get it out. Okay, over here on the uh, selector seal. 
you always want to replace that. It's hard to get to if it's in the vehicle. With a sharp pick, just drive into the seal itself, pry out, it'll walk right out. You want to get all of this stuff done before you get over to the portion. You want to get everything off the outside of the case first. So we're now ready to flip it over. Get the pan. I've removed all but two pan bolts. Same thing. These are half inch drive bolts. This pan's damaged. You can use the pan or the case on this unit. And as you can see, there's a lot of shavings, metal, clutch material. This transmission's got a lot of damage. Get the filter out of the way. Flat screwdriver. Discard the filter. You can see the debris in there. Clip to the kick down cable that gives you passing gear. It's got a hair clip in it. Hair pin. You want to pop that out. Remove this. This is slightly bent. That needs to be straight. We'll straighten that before we reassemble. We're going to remove the retainer. All of these are half inch. So we're going to remove all the valve body bolts. We're going to leave the separator plate spacer in place. This is our linkage holder, park holder, spring. All of these bolts are the same length, so it doesn't matter. Can't mix them up. They're all the same. Okay, now that we got our bolts out, you've seen it jump loose. So the clip that holds the linkage selector comes right out. This will go either way as well. We'll go through this in detail on the way back. We've got a valve body. We're just going to lay it over to the side in one piece. We're going to reuse this. Now, this is the uh, band accumulator servo. Now we're going to take our pressure plate off. Okay, we've got all the, all the separator plate. It'll come right off. This is an item that we will reuse. Now, as far as the spacer plate, channel plate, we're not using this back. Uh, we're using a shift kit, so we can discard this plate and gaskets. Filter, we want to remove. Pump screen filter, get rid of that. Governor filter but we have four check balls in here we're just going to dump those out but we want to go ahead and get our pump out right here is the intermediate clutches we'll turn it around instead of trying to put something in to prize the pump out you can just push gently on the intermediate clutch and it'll walk the pump out just reach and get it pull it out now we have the intermediate clutch Always starts with a spacer plate. So we want to use a, a pick with a hooked end on it. Pull the intermediate clutches out. And the last plate, of course, is the thick plate, your apply plate. Uh, we want to get the band out of here, so just take a screwdriver, pop it up out of the slot. comes out. Now we're just going to get a hold of the forward drum. Pull the forward and direct drum out at the same time. We've got a Torrington bearing between the two. We're just going to set them over to the side. We've got a one-way clutch or a sprag. Look at our forward drum. Okay, we'll take our thrust washer off of our ring gear to the forward planet. the ring gear out. We got another thrust washer sits on the forward planet. And what retains the output shaft to the forward planet 
is a small snap ring. Now you can use a pair of snap ring pliers, get in there and get a hold of it. But I found the simplest way is to take a good sharp pick, locate the end of it, and just insert it underneath of the groove. And you can normally just push it out that way. Let me see. Right here. Found the end. I've got it popped out. Now I'm going to take a crooked pick. It's a very small snap ring, so it's hard to get a hold of with a pair of snap ring pliers. I prefer this method. Just pop it out with a a pick. Once you get that out, reach and get the forward plane of the signal and just give it a jerk, it'll pop right out. Get your shell. It also has a thrust washer on it. You got a screwdriver with a notch ground out in the end of it. Works really well. If you locate the end of it and just come over get right under the edge of the snap ring roll it out reach in and get it pulls right out I like to take the hole unit just back it into the bench give it a whack and then you can reach in it and pull the entire assembly out we have the center support which has a one way sprag and a one way clutch I replace this with a 4L60 top, which is thicker. And then the low planet, reverse planet, load reverse. Looks good. Check the rollers in it. Then we got our reverse clutch set. This has a little burn on it, a wear. See a lot of the materials missing. And then our shaft with our rear race comes out check it where the bushing's been going through there's a Torrington bearing goes on the end of that okay the last piece that we have left in the case is the reverse piston there's a snap ring in there we're going to change camera angles so we can get a better view at removing that we're going to get the reverse piston out of the case that's the last thing in the case we're going to use a, a universal tool that's made specific for this you can use this in a, a 250 a 350 a 700 r4 a 4l 60 e it's really common to a lot of transmissions so we've located the groove on the snap ring which right here's the the groove so we want to place the notches on this tool in two of the grooves so we're away from the snap ring so we can reach in with our pliers and get it so pretty much I want to turn it around to expose the angle of the snap ring to where I can get the pliers on it see how I've got it situated in the case may move it over this way a little more to center it up and when I turn this down I'm going to compress these springs so we can get the snap ring out we're catching one lug here and half of that one and it is compressing now a good pair of snap ring pliers just take your sharp tip come in and catch the groove see how the snap ring is open I'm going to take a crooked pick reach in get the back of the snap ring lift it and it pops right off loosen the tool and notice how it wants to go under the groove it's kind of got it locked take a screwdriver stick down see how it pop back straight okay. snap ring or retainer springs is removed now this is the park paw run from the manual linkage to put it in the park and it will contact 
the piston so we're going to remove it on the outside of the case two bolts to the park paw so this will back up in order to let the piston come out okay here's the park paw you see how it depresses pushes out gets into the race we're going to remove these two 9 16 bolts when we take the retainer out see how I let it spring back now that will allow the piston to come out and to get it out you want to shoot air in this feed hole this is to the reverse so just put your blow gun on it shoot it and as you can see here the piston just popped out reach in pull the piston out it has three seals they're not lip seals and this is uh, one of the failures on this transmission as you see the seals cut broken just old so is this we've also got one on the inside there's three bonded pistons on here what I mean by bonded they don't have a lip they're just solid okay we'll move on to uh, tear down an inspection of the forward and direct drum and the pump okay we're going to look at the forward drum first uh, I always press the shaft out you can knock it out they they have a tendency to wear where it goes into the bushing uh, it wears where the pump bushings ride on it in these two areas right here uh, shafts not very expensive so I choose to just push it out press it out or take a hammer and a socket this size and tap it out and then tap a new one in using a block and we're using a universal press tool which is to just press the compression springs down to get the pistons out first we're going to remove the clutches from this drum so we're just going to take a standard screwdriver locate the end of the snap ring pop it out you always have a spacer plate in the forward drum before the steel so and then spacer steel and clutch steel so on we'll go over that in detail when we put it back together you always end with a clutch and then your pressure plate sits on top and then your snap ring goes back okay we need to locate this snap ring right here's the end of it so we're going to take our compression tool Bend it down. We're trying to compress this plate. Get the snap ring out. And then we'll get our piston out to put new seals on it. I'm just going to take the sharp end of the uh, snap ring pliers. Open it up and just take my finger. Reach in and get it. Comes right out. Then we're going to let the pressure off of the spring slowly see how I wanted to pop that's the reason I moved it a little turn the tool out of the way okay now this is just loose springs it's not a caged type spring set so when we put this back together we're going to get the cage type where they're all attached to it instead of individual springs we'll take these out And then we're just going to reach in and get the piston and pull it out. And if you'll notice, this has two lip seals that face down. See the lip, the lip on the inside. Get rid of those. Get rid of this one. And you can see how it sets in the drum, lip down. But this is the forward drum, so we'll move on with the direct drum and the direct drum has the sprag race one-way clutch and by the way both of these the forward and direct has the same clutches and steels on a 350 turbo so 
I'm first going to locate the snap ring, the end of it. Dump the clutches out. There is no spacer plate. The direct drive, I'm locked it forward. And as you see, these clutches are pretty well gone. All the material's gone off of them. I'd say we're going to find a bad seal or two. There's three seals in this drum. Still one more steel in there. Okay. Now this is the same. It's uncaged springs. So same application. We're going to turn it around. We're going to find the groove to the snap ring. The opening, which is right there. Try to line our tool up as best we can. Compress it down. Okay, we're going to take this snap ring out, same as the other. Pop it up. The back side's not pushed down very well, so I just tapped it a little, and it came right out. Let the pressure off. Move the tool. Same thing, uncaged springs. We're going to replace that. Reach in, pull the piston now. We've got a lip seal that faces down, lip seal that faces down, and then inside the drum we have a lip seal that faces up when it goes in. This piston's tapered for that so it will slide over that. Okay, let's look at the pump. We got the seal out earlier. So this supply piston is for the intermediate clutches. The first ones that we took out of the transmission. You've got an O-ring in here. I never reused the pump body and gears. I always replace that with new. But if it's good, that's you know your call. Uh, you've got two sealing rings here and three sealing rings the same size here. They're metal they clasp together and these are worn out you can see how sharp they are but first order of business to get the piston out we've got five half inch bolts going around holding the retainer springs so we're going to zap this out That'll bring our retainer springs out that holds this piston down. Reach in, pull the piston out. It, like the other clutches, has got lipped seals. Lip going down. So you have seal tool in here to put it in. We'll go over that on the reassembly. Pull these old seals out. Now we're going to reach and get the stator part of the pump. And it will separate now. And we're going to reuse this stator. We're going to put new bushings in it. We're going to check, look for wear. I don't see any wear. It looks good. Need to clean everything up good. And here's your, pour a little of this all away. Pump gears. So you can pull those out and look at them. They look good. They don't have any wear. This is where it actually goes into the torque converter, these two notches. So a lot of times they'll be worn here quite a bit, but these really look pretty good. And if you're reusing a pump half, front half, you want to look for gouges or scratches in here or in the wall. But if it's smooth, it should be okay. And then you've got a bushing in here that drives out from this direction with a bushing driver, drives back in this way. You always want to put a new bushing in any application. Let's look at the parts that goes into our unit we're building today. If we were going to do a stock build, we just need a banner kit, which consists of a paper rubber ring and seal kit and a clutch module. But we're building a performance unit today, so we're going to put quite a bit more. We're going to need our paper rubber ring and seal kit. And normally I use Alto Red Eagle high energy racing clutches, but the customer requested Stage 1 Ravestas. So that's what we're putting in the unit today. And we're going to use the Alto Choline High Temp Steels. 
complete set. We're going to replace all the bushings with the extra wide brass bushings in the unit. We're going to install a new pump body with new gears, new bushing, new seal, so that's the complete outer half. Also, we in the disassembly, some of the pistons didn't have caged springs, so we bought caged springs. We bought the thin pistons. Uh, some 350 turbos only hold three forward clutches. Some of them have four in the forward drum, but we use the thin piston, so both clutch packs will hold five steels, five clutches. Intermediate sprag race. We're going to replace that with new, and we're going to use the Sonex high temp hardened sprag race. We use a high energy Cavalier band. And as we talked about, we're going to place the input shaft with a new one. Just presses in. We'll go over that. Modulator valve. New speedo gears and bullet. We want to replace everything in this unit. All new brass thrust washers. We're replacing the standard center support down in the bottom that comes in the 350 turbo. The one-way clutch, the low sprag. We're going to replace that with a larger 4L60 top. We're going to use the whole 4L60 race assembly. And another product that we always used and recommend is the Fairbanks Transaction Shift Kit. This comes with a brass filter. It has all the components in here. You can set it up full manner for several different applications. But for our uh, street and strip transmission that we're building today, we're going to set it up stage two. Okay, we mentioned a new modulator valve. Let's talk a little bit about modulator valves. Uh, there's several different types. The white stripe is the economy. The black stripe is a little better, but the red stripe is the good modulator valve. Always replace the governor with a complete new governor assembly. And you have to specify if it's a V8 or a V6. Uh, they're weighted different. A V8 engine has small light weights in it. A V6 has large weights in it. And the cap. You see the old cap. It's got a lot of bends and dents. And the land on the back of the governor sets against this to hold it in the bore correctly. So you want a new one so it sets firmly in the case so it's not walking in and out. Talking about our extra wide bushings in our parts layout. You can see how this direct drum has this narrow bushing in here and this one's extra wide which will fill this gap in there. This drum slides on the stator support and this bushing rides on this land. So you can see, we're just going to stick it on there with a the small bushing, you can see that the end play that we have. We want all of this to fit tight so we don't have any pressure loss. Okay, we're going to take this direct drum bushing out and install one. I'm just going to take our chisel, catch in on the land, tap it out. Go from one side to the other. Here's the new wide one, brass. This one was aluminum, and this bushing is wide enough go down to this land where it stops to fill it. So we just want to set it on there straight. Take a bushing driver that's bigger than the bushing to start it. You don't want to use the one that's the same size until you're ready to seat it on down. So we're going to take the one that's larger. Taps right in. And when you're looking in the groove, you can see that it still lacks an eighth of an inch or so going on down. So we're going to take our pushing driver that fits it perfectly, seat it on down. Okay, we tapped it on down, flush in the land where it goes. Now we're going to get our pump stator to make sure we didn't get a tight spot. Slide it on. You remember how we had movement before? Nice and tight now. 
going to do all of our bushings this way. Simple procedure. Another common problem where you have a pressure loss in your output shaft. Your input shaft that we replaced goes into the bushing on the output shaft. And you can see the wear and the movement that this has. Okay, we just want to take a sharp chisel to get this bushing out of the output shaft. Just want to take the sharp end, get it under the bushing, drive it in, put it up against something where it don't move, and just roll it out. It'll just pop right out. Take your new wide bushing, brass, put it in, bushing driver, drive it back in place. Test fit the input shaft back into the new bushing. Make sure it's not too tight that it comes in and out easily. Okay, we're using the 4L60E larger low reverse sprag, the whole center support and race. We're going to discard the one that came with it. We're going to put a new element in here which is wider, holds better. All right, here's our new sprag element, which is almost a half inch wider than a 350 turbo element. We can take the retainer snap ring out. We just want to use a sharp pick, get in behind the snap ring, pop it up, pull it out. Reach in, get the sprag assembly. Notice how the notches are turned on this sprite assembly to go in in this direction. You turn it over the other way, it's going to be backward. It's not going to go back in. So it will only go in one way. Okay, I've got the new sprag. I've lined it up the way the notches are cut. Just going to set it on there. Rock it. I don't want to force it. I don't want to knock the springs out or the rollers. So I just want to gently work it back and forth so it drops into the race. Okay, we're just going to work it around gently, drops in, place the snap ring. We'll take the sprag race, sit it on top of it, turn it clockwise, push down, locks right in. When you're holding the sprag, the way it turns up, hold the inside of it, the sprag turns counterclockwise and locks clockwise, same as the intermediate. Okay, we've got our forward drum over at the press. We turned it over and we, we pressed the old shaft out of the drum with the press you can knock it out but I prefer pressing it out so we're just going to flip it over we want to feel inside this the pump rings right in here to make sure it's not damaged feels good so we're just going to take the splined end of the new shaft start it in the splines until we fill it right into the splines. And we're just going to smoothly press the new shaft back into the drum. Okay, bottom down. Now 
now. We have our new shaft installed in the drum. Okay. All right, back to our output shaft. We always want to look at the teeth in the ring gear good. Make sure there's no damage in there. If it did need to be replaced, the snap ring comes out and it just slips off. Put another one on. We want to look real close at the rollers on a rear planet that goes in that ring gear we want to check it for side motion has there any movement any play whatsoever we want to replace it feels good we want to check the front planet the forward planet the same way we want to rock it from side to side See if there's any side motion. All four feels good. Then we want to spin them. Look for any damage on the teeth. Looks good. There's a Torrington bearing inside. We want to fill of it. Make sure it's good. Feels good. Splines are good. Then we want to check the ring gear that goes on the planet. There's a bushing goes in here. Goes flush that we're going to replace as well. We're going to put a bushing in everything. And like the other, we want to look at all of the teeth that the front planet ring gear goes into. Make sure it's smooth. And you can see where this bushing, what its roll is, it comes down to seal right here. We still got the old bushing in there and you can see some movement in it. the same thing for the pump we're going to put new bushing in the pump on the outside new bushing in the pump on this end we're going to check the grooves where the three larger rings go to make sure they're not scored we're going to look where the two smaller rings goes all looks good We've got two bushings in the sun gear that are the same. Same procedure. Take a chisel, drive it out, turn it over, chisel, drive it out the same way. Set your new bushings in, bushing driver, knock it in flush on both sides. But you want all of this to have a nice tight fit. This sun shell and sun gear slides on the output shaft on these two lands. We're going to put it on with the standard bushings. Has a little little bit of play. So we're going to put the new bushings in. We have one small bushing in the planetary. Also goes on the output shaft all the way down to the bottom land. It's flush to the inside. You just want to knock it out, the chisel, new it in, drive it in till it is flush with the bottom. Bushings are really important. You got looseness in the bushings, then you're going to have pressure loss. Okay, our bushings in, so let's flip the direct drum over, get our new intermediate sprag that sits on top of the direct drum. Dump it out there's notches on the sprag the way it's notched in the drum it'll only sit on there one way if you got it upside down it won't go on it won't go over this little land so you can see the way it's made it'll only it's only directional to go one way we're just going to rock it back and forth gently we don't want to force it and knock the springs or the rollers out so we get it down you can see what I was talking about the little notches we're just going to press down on it and you can see how it snapped on then we're going to take our new case hardened race set it on turn it counterclockwise drops on see how it locks clockwise free rolls counterclockwise set the retainer plate on 
where the two notches are. Bring our snap ring back. We'll take a screwdriver, press down. We're locked in. Our new hardened race is on. Okay, let's have a look at our paper rubber ring and seal kit. We've opened it up. Everything's packaged in the individual package, like the direct and forward clutch. It's marked. It has a diagram on it. Shows you how it goes in. Those seals are in there. Here's your low reverse piston. Seals are in there. Your intermediate clutch. You got your valve body gaskets. You got new check balls. You got external components. New seals and your ceiling rings. Okay, we're going to build the direct drum first. We've got our piston, holds two lip seals. The drum has the one lip seal that turns up. Both forward and direct clutches seals are in this sub kit. So we're just going to dump them out. The larger of the two bigger O-rings, one of them smaller, the larger goes to the forward clutch. The smaller one goes on the piston to the direct clutch. And the way the lips grooved, stick it in, just roll it around. Form it. You can see how the lip is grooved, which sets into the piston. We're going to use a lip seal installer tool to go around it to set it down in. These two seals are the same for the forward and direct piston. We're just going to stick it in the groove. Same as this, lip open. And we're going to take next largest and this lip goes up that goes in this drum. Going to walk it around. Kind of form fit it a little. We're going to lube it up. I'm using STP. You can use trans gel. Going to lube up the seals as well as in the drum. We're going to put some lube on this tapered area that's going to slide over this lip seal. Okay, we're just going to set it in, twist it around. You see how it's catching on the lips? Seal installer tool, it's like a feeler gauge. We're going to start with the inner one. Just going to hold it, walk it around. You see it dropped a little. We're going to twist it. Then we're going to come on the outside. We don't want to stab it into where we can cut the seal. We just want to walk it around gently. We're not pushing on the piston yet. We just want to go around this a couple of times to make sure the lip is started in the groove. Drops right in. It's down flush. We're going to take the new caged springs, sit on the retainers. Okay, we're going to bring the spring compressor back around, set it on, line it up, compress the spring. Our snap ring started in the groove. Just walk it around. Release the press. Okay, we're going to install our choline steel and clutches in the direct drum. Something I failed to mention earlier. Both pressure plates for the forward and direct are the same and the large snap ring. Both snap rings in these drums 
that holds the springs in are the same in the forward and direct. There's no spacer plate in the direct drum. So we're going to start directly on the piston with a steel and a clutch. It's always steel, clutch, steel, clutch. We put these thin pistons in so we're going to have five clutches, five steels. Okay, we got five clutches, five steels, so we're going to put our pressure plate back on. And you can see the snap ring groove is almost up at the top. We're going to install the snap ring back into the drum. Okay, now here's where we want to check tolerance in this drum. Okay, we're going to take a feeler gauge. I've got it set on 32 thousandths. Uh, 30, 30 to 40 thousandths is fine. We're going to go under the apply plate to the top of the first clutch. You see that's a snug tight fit right there. So we're going to air check this clutch pack too, but I like around 32. I'm going to say that's 33. There's no movement on it. Okay, we've got the forward piston. Take the two remaining lipped seals, put them on, lipped down. And as you can see, you can't do it backwards. It just won't go. It just sinks in. So it'll only go one way. Just gonna walk it around, form it. Take the inner one. Slide it in the groove. Okay, I'm going to lubricate the seals. We're going to lubricate the inside of the drum. Set the piston in. Take the seal tool. Go around the inner seal first. I'm not pushing, I'm just holding. Okay, I've got that one started, so I'm going to twist slightly. Then I'm going to go around the outside of the big lip seal. Just get in behind it. Go around a couple of turns. I'm going to twist, drops right in. We got rid of these single loose springs. We got the caged springs. We'll drop those in. Bring our press tool back around. Press it down. install the snap ring. Okay, the difference on this forward drum and the direct drum, we have the wavy plate, the starter plate. They're in all the 350 turbos in the forward drum. You start with the starter against the piston and then we start with the new steel. And clutch, steel, clutch. We never put a clutch against a clutch. Okay, we have it five steels, five clutches. We're going to replace the pressure plate and the snap ring. Okay, we're going to check tolerance on this and see what movement we have. Get our feeler gauge, still on 32 thousandths. Slide it in, nice and tight.
we'll air check this drum as well when we put the pump together. Let's assemble the pump. We've got the new pump body and gears. It's got a new bush and new seal complete to put in. If you do have yours out, the lugs that go in the torque converter turn to the top. If you turn it over, you see how it's down, put it in, that's wrong. They go up. We've got our sub kit that's got the two seals for our intermediate piston that goes on our stator. You can get those seals out. Bring the stator back and just set it in place. Okay, this hole inside of the pump stator, if you look where your check ball is in the pump body and gears, then there's a feed hole. If you line this hole up with this cutout, your bolt holes will line up perfectly straight all the way around. Rather than continually turning it, if you'll just look for that hole next to the check ball, set it on, line that up, you can see how we got a perfect line up. Now that we have this lined up, we're going to stick a couple of the bow body bolts through the, the holes just to keep it lined up so it don't turn. I'm going to put the intermediate piston seal on, lip down like all the rest. Just walk it around. Slide the inner seal in. Warm it up, lube it up, take the piston, just set it on, twist it a little, take our seal tool installer, get it started in the lip on the inside, walk it around, run a couple of times, on the outside. snapped right in. Okay, we bought the caged spring assembly. It's just going to set on. Now this is offset, so you got to look at it to see which way it's going to line your pump bolts up. So rather than picking it up and turning it, just turn the entire piston until it's lined up. Pick a hole like this one, spin it around, Until all the bolts holes line up. Place your bolts, half inch, five of them. We want to hold these two halves together, so we're going to use a band installer that just holds the pump securely in place. You can use a a big clamp. A big zip tie if you don't have this tool, but we're just keeping the two halves tightly together so it'll slide back into the case. We're going to lightly run our bolts down. We'll remove the band, the alignment band. Move the two valve body bolts set it in a slot on the bench, drop it through one of the bolt holes, turn it around. We want to torque these pump bolts to 18 foot-pounds. Okay, we've got it torqued down. So the next thing we want to do, we want to set the pump into our torque converter and turn it to make sure the pump turns smoothly on a converter. We've opened our ring kit. The two white smaller rings go in the top two lands. And then we've got three metal rings that are alike and you can see how they have a clasp. They clasp together. These three are slightly larger. So we're just going to open them up.
stretch it down push the clasp together I'm going to offset these rings so all of the connectors aren't lined up now we're going to do the two white smaller rings on the top which clasp the same stretch it on push in overlap offset those okay I've got a new brass pump washer this land sits in this groove we put trans gel on both sides of it we want all of our bearings and bushings lubricated good when we put it back together and stick it on the pump then we're going to air check our drums we're going to check the direct drum first sits on the rings we're going to spin it around here's the feed holes to check the drum the big slot to check the direct clutch pack it's the third hole over that applies the direct clutch you can see how that moves where we was checking our tolerance holds good I'm going to bring the forward drum back I'm going to drop it on and the second hole see how it applies see we got very little movement You want to check the intermediate piston you want to do that really carefully because you blow it completely out so you barely just want to put a tiny bit of air pressure coming out and this is going to be the last hole we're going to get just a tiny bit see how the pistons rising but it's holding it's not leaking we're going to get our new pump o-ring out of our overhaul kit slide it into the groove now our pumps complete ready to put back in the case when we get to that step okay what I like to do is uh, pretty well put everything together outside of the case of the transmission so you can see it better okay we've got a reverse piston in our springs so the next thing that would go in would be output shaft with the Torrington bearing sit in in then a three tab brass washer sits down in the notches the rear planet sits on top of that with a steel a clutch steel clutch we're going to repeat the steel clutch until we've got five and five okay when we got the piston in the case like it's supposed to this is more at the top of this than what we've got here but we don't have exact tolerance where we're out of the case but we've got five steels five clutches next piece that goes in is our center support with sprag drops on top of the planet then we need the washer that the sun shell sets on and we take the shell set the shell on next forward planet has a Torrington bearing that sets on there push it in we have a four tab washer sits on top of the forward planet and then the ring gear to the forward planet sits on top of that then we've got a three tab washer sits on the ring gear 
Then our forward drum sits on top of that. Twist it, spin it down. When it's all the way down, it's pretty well level with this groove, the top of the drum in the shell. Okay, we've got a Torrington bearing now that goes on. Can't get that backwards. If you turn it the other way, it just don't fit. Torrington bearing separates between the direct drum and the forward drum. Set it on. Spin it down. Okay, see how it's pretty well level? Our band then goes around the direct drum. Then our intermediate steel starter plate sits on. Clutch sits directly on the apply plate. Then a steel. Clutch. Steel. There's three of them. And then we're going to put the final steel back. And we had a spacer plate here, a small plate when we took this unit apart. But we're going to replace that with another steel to give it better support. And we had our pump complete with our bearing, washer, everything on. And then the last component, the pump drops down inside of everything. So there's your angle, your view of what everything looks like out of the transmission before we install it back in the case. Okay, let's get ready to reassemble our unit. The case was damaged that we disassembled, so we've ordered a, a case from our supplier, which comes with a new case bushing in the back, and everything's checked, good to go. So let's get ready and put this unit together. We're going to get our reverse piston back in. We have the three formed seals, one on the end, out. They're not lipped. I've already put those on and lubed them up. Okay, you notice the notch in the case here. Let me point over on this side. And then there's a notch on the piston. This notch aligns with that notch. So we'll drop it in there. We're going to wiggle it back and forth. Press down on it. You can use your output shaft to lightly tap it while you're pushing on it. Okay. It's in. It's seated. Here's this part pole I was talking about. If you didn't take that linkage off, it blocks that from coming out. Okay, we're going to take our retainer springs. Drop them in. Back to our universal press tool. Put it in the notches, line it up pretty well center, spin it down. Okay, we don't need snap ring pliers or anything to put this snap ring back in. We're just going to take a pick, walk it in. I'm going to reach in on the back side of it, stick it across, and I'm going to take my finger, hold it in the groove. Then I'm going to come on this side with a straight pick, get a hold of it, push it in. Here it snap. Move the tool. And you see it's behind the tabs on all so four. Start reassembling this unit. We've got a reverse piston in. So the next piece that goes in the unit is the output shaft with the Torrington bearing. I'm going to put a little gel on that. Stick the Torrington bearing on. Drop it in. Then we've got a three tab brass washer that I've already stuck in the tabs and then our low planetary then we want to put the clutches in 
we're going to start with a steel directly against the piston. Remember when we took these out, you want to, you want to hold these clutches, this wide notch, and then this wide opening. They'll only go in one way. This wide notch goes in right there. If you got it over the other way, it won't go in. You want the cut out from 3 o'clock to 6 o'clock. With the wide notch, it drops right in. I'm going to start with a steel, then a clutch, steel, clutch, Okay, when we end up, we're going to have five steels, five clutches, pretty well to the top of this planetary. Okay, this clunk spring that comes out of the side of the case, we're going to drop it in. You see where it just lays in there. It'll only go in here in one position. The purpose of this spring is when you put the vehicle in reverse, the center support wants to move on those lugs. This is just a cushion spring to keep it from making a big banging sound. Okay, next piece that goes in, we're just going to lay that clip, it'll snap over it, is the center support with the sprag. See where the wide cutout is? That's where the 3 and 9 is. So we're going to go from the wide to the 12 o'clock up here. And the 12 o'clock in the top of your case is that. So we're just going to lay it in. See this clunk spring? Push down shove the brace in and you see how the 4L60 type brace fits in here fine install the snap ring I'm going to take the snap ring to the edge of where the spring is that last lug I'm going to take a screwdriver push down on it walk it in the air gun go down in the bottom now uh, the apply hole to shoot air to the reverse piston and you can hear that it holds. Okay, we've got a four tab washer brass. We've lubed it up that sits on top of the center support. Our shell sits on there. Then our forward planet, we've already lubed up the four tab washer that sits on there. We've got a Torrington bearing that rides on this drum. We're just going to push it in. Take a straight pick. Put the small snap ring back in. See how we just started it into the groove. Pops right in. We've got the ring gear to the forward planet. We've got our new three tab brass. We're going to set it on top of the planet. Our direct. Set it on. Spin it down. Wiggle it back and forth. It'll fall down pretty well level with the top of the shell. Torrington bearing. It's on top of the forward drum. Direct drum sits on the bearing. Take your vice grips, shake it down until it falls in the notch, bottom down. Install the new band, see the cutout which goes in this notch, push it down, take a screwdriver, slide it into the lock. When the pin comes back through from the band servo, It'll catch it here. Apply plate for the intermediate clutches sits in this drum. If you note the way this is made, you've got four tabs together, you've got two tabs by themselves, and then three. We're going to take the two tabs into this cutout at 10 o'clock. Lay it in, drops right in. We're going to put a clutch directly on the steel. Then a plate, the plate is cut the same way. So we want to go with these two areas and the one. And 10 o'clock, there's three of these clutches.
and I'm lining these clutches up so these holes cut in them are lined up. They're not offset so fluid can pass through them. Okay, we end with a steel and we had a spacer plate, a small one here before, but we're not going to use that back. We're going to use another high temp steel to give better pressure apply from the intermediate piston. I'm going to install the pump gasket. I'm going to look for the two widest areas in here. Look at the gasket, turn it over, match it up to that area. See how it all lines up. I'm going to take the pump. The feed holes, the wide area here locks in the case. And we're going to match those wide holes to where the cutout is. When we get it down before we push it in, we're going to take a screwdriver, stick down in to keep it aligned properly. Falls right in. Push it down. We're going to put our pump bolts back in. Torque those down. Okay. These bolts have a fiber washers that comes in the overhaul kit. Be sure and put the new fiber washer on all of the bolts before you install them. You don't want to use an impact gun on these bolts. They've got shallow threads. So you want to run them in with a socket and ratchet and then final torque them with a torque wrench at 13 foot-pounds. Then we want to check in play on the shaft. We don't have any. There's no movement whatsoever. If we did have movement up and down on the shaft, there was a spacer that came in our kit with our pump washer that we would reinstall behind the pump washer. Okay, we want to turn the output shaft, turns in both directions, turns smoothly, a little resistance. The output shaft was real tight and you couldn't turn it with your hand and it was hard to turn with pliers or it wouldn't turn at all. When you put your forward and direct drum in, you obviously didn't get it seated all the way down. So if you did run into that problem, you need to pull the pump back out. Make sure your forward and direct drum seated all the way down. We want to check in play on the output shaft, same as we did the input. So we're just going to lift up and down on it. And it's firm. You can just feel just a touch of movement, which is normal. And the output shaft turns freely counterclockwise, but it engages the sprag when you turn it clockwise, so it's harder to turn. Okay, we moved over to the intermediate servo on the outside of the case. We removed the steel cover that was on here, but we're going to replace that with the thick aluminum type. Here's the spring that goes in. This gives it movement. This one holds it firmly. The accumulator servo, we replaced that with new as well. And we've also replaced the accumulator spring with a softer spring. So this all sits together inside the case. We have two rings that snap together like the pump rings that go on the accumulator. They're metal. They're in our overhaul kit, so we're just going to slide those on. Push over and lock it like we did the pump rings. Put the larger ring on. Lock it. We're going to lubricate it. Slide it back into the case. pops right in the bore. The o-ring that goes on the accumulator housing. Take the accumulator with the o-ring coated in trans gel. You can apply some green trans gel to this to hold it into the cap. Don't take a great deal of force to press this in. You just want to make sure your seal don't get pinched on the way in. See how that's back? I'm just holding it, slip it around. It's 
snaps right in. Okay, we're going to go ahead and reinstall the new Speedo gear. We've got the clip on the one that we disassembled that had fallen out. We found it laying back inside the bore. But we want to rotate the transmission around until the hole that this clip goes in sits in. See how that springs down? We're going to align it with the notch for the spring. Hold down on it. Slides right on. See how this retainer keeps it from coming off? We've got the output shaft that we're using. It's different from the one that we took out. The one that we took out had the large diameter speedo gear in it. We're going back with the small hole. This is a little bit heavier housing. We put a new bushing in here. We're going to put a new seal in it. And this is a speedo bullet. It'll go in here instead of that large diameter one. The gear to the speedo bullet goes in. A new seal in the rear output housing, extension housing. This is a 6 inch, the short one. If it was a long tail 350, it would have a 9 inch shaft. This would be longer. We got in our small parts kit and got the O-ring out, which is just a bonded seal. Speedo gear goes to the driver's side. We're just going to slip it on, reinstall the four 916 bolts. Okay, we've got our four bolts torqued down to 18 foot pounds modulator pin. We're going to reinstall it back into the case. Just goes in one way. We're going to put the new red stripe modulator valve. We talked about modulators but not in detail. I got cut off. The red stripe indicates the best modulator actually you can buy. It's adjustable. There's an adjustable screw in here. You can dial the pressure in and out to adjust the vacuum pressure to change your shift timing. Has an o-ring already on it. Put a little lube on it slide it into the case. The retainer clip can go two ways. One way it pushes out on the modulator so you know that's backwards. So we're just going to flip it over, put it in, and when we draw this half inch short bolt in, it's going to pull in on the modulator valve. We don't have a lot of thread on this either so this is something we don't want to use an impact gun on. But you can see it drawing the modulator valve in as I'm tightening it up. 13 foot pounds. Okay, we're going to install the governor. We've got the new governor assembly. And if you look in the governor, when you toggle the weights, you see the pin move up and down. If you're reusing a governor, make sure your pin's not stuck. You want to clean this, blow it out good, and lubricate it. I've already lubricated it, so I'm just going to slide it into the bore, rock it back and forth until it bottoms out. We talked about the importance of a new cap. We got a brand new GM cap. We got in our overhaul kit. Got the small bonded O-ring. Goes on here. Okay, we don't want to beat this cap up, so we're going to take a big punch and just tap it in four point all the way around. Just a little bit at a time to drive it all the way in flush and then put the retainer spring back on. Okay, we have a new retainer clip. There's a hole up here. The crooked end sits in the hole. There's a slot in the bottom where this goes. You just want to start it in the slot. Take a hammer. Locks right in. Put the new gear through the new Speedo bullet. Notch cut out in the Speedo. That's for the tab that locks it in. It's going to twist it in. Drops right in. We've lined that notch up to where the little lock's going to go in. 10 millimeter bolt and the lock tab. So we're going to set the lock tab in place. The little corner cut off goes up. Tighten this clip up. Six foot pounds. Just firm. Lock on to the output shaft. And you can see how the speedo turns. Get the 
manual linkage out of the old case. We're going to replace the linkage back into our case. We cleaned it up, the pin that goes through, we're going to slide it back through the case. We've not install, installed the seal out here yet. On the outside, we want to get our pin back in first. Okay, we're just going to take the linkage as one assembly. We're going to set it down, bring the pin through, see how it's grooved. The notch will go in. Take the 11 16 nut, get it started. We're just going to push it back through as we're tightening it up. Now that it's starting to firm up, we want this to go firmly back up on the cutout in the shaft. See how it started? This pin comes down to contact this, so we're going to pull it over. So we're going to initially tighten it with our wrench. But the final tie, we want this to contact that aluminum block pin. Come in behind it and final tighten it. Okay, we still got this movement back and forth. That's where this retainer clip was at that we just slid it out of. The simplest way to put this back on is take a, a wrench larger than it, like a three quarter, set it on, cap over it, snap down, locked. If you try to pry this out with a screwdriver, you'll bend it and it don't want to lock back good. And that takes all the side motion out of it. Put our part paw back in place. Take the retainer clip. It sits on. We took 916 bolts out of these, but we're going to replace them back with half inch case hardened black bolts. A little stronger for the part. We've torqued these two bolts down to 18 foot pounds. We've got the accumulator servo that applies the band. The cutout shape in the top is up on all of them. If you've got it this way, the flat side, that's wrong. They all go up. Okay, then we've got a pin. And on the pin, there's a small washer. It's important you put this together correctly. The washer sits on top of the pin. The coned part of the pin goes down to contact the band. Okay, once you've installed the small washer, then you put your servo on the washer. And then we've got a beveled plate, which is beveled, tapered, like the spring, for it to sit on there. So we want to turn that bevel plate this way for the spring to go on. Now we're going to install a new metal ring that's provided in our kit. Drop this spring in and just set the accumulator down. Snaps right in. Pump filter screen, which this is the new one provided in our kit. It just sticks down in this notch. Then our governor filter screen, coned in, goes in this hole right here. Install the selector shaft seal. We're going to put a little gel on it. We're just going to slide it on, turn it a little bit, get it started over the groove on this selector shaft. We just drive it in we're liable to cut the seal. Take a deep well 12.13 millimeter socket sets right on there same size drives right in flush. Look at the shift kit that goes in this unit. We've used this kit for years we've always had satisfied customers. It's a really universal kit. You can set it up heavy duty for towing. You can set it up street and strip like we're doing today or you can set it up full manual competition. It's a superior product. You get a new brass filter with it. When you look at the directions it tells you which springs to replace to give you the best performance. This kit comes with two special valve body gaskets. The larger one going to the case. The smaller one goes to the valve body. Comes with two channel plates. One has one notch that's for heavy duty or street and strip and the plate with two notches cut in it is for full manual competition it also has a special oil transfer plate where you use back your separator plate that sits on top of it, it creates a new lube circuit under there 
we're going to replace this one. This one has a lot of wear on it. We've got a new one. This template comes with the channel plates, the one notch plate or the two notch, whichever one you're going to use. Here's the one notch. You want to compare your plate to the template to see if anything's not drilled properly before you install it. And if you look at the valve body, the way we've got it laying here compared to the instructions, it's in the same position. The large blue spring goes into the boost valve. The coned in, tapered in, goes in first. Then we've got a large red spring. Coned in, goes in first, goes into the 2 3 shift valve. Then we have a small hardened spring that goes into the manual low valve. This is your direct clutch servo. We're going to take this out and put a new seal in it. Has a metal ring on it. I'll show you how to do that. This is the kick down which the detent cable is hooked to to give you passing gear. Your manual valve connects to your manual linkage. This is your boost valve where all your pressure comes from. This is your 2-3 shift valve. Manual low and manual low control. We've got roll pins in here that holds these shift valves in. I'm going to roll it over. You don't want to hit the shift valves. The aluminum, they'll break. So the idea is you want to lay the valve body down, push in on the shift valves, walk them back and forth till the pin falls out. Come back over. They stay lubricated in oil, so they come out pretty simple. We'll pull the valve out. And this is our boost valve. We're going to work it. Works smooth inside. We've washed and cleaned this valve body like all the other hard parts thoroughly. We started this build, all the parts that we're going to use back. You can wash your parts in your valve body with a pressure washer. You can wash it in a parts washer as long as you air dry it well and re lubricate the valve body. Okay, I'm going to reach in and get the spring, the boost spring, the old one. Take the new blue spring supplied, coned in first. I'm going to slide it in. I'm going to take the boost valve, slip it back into the valve body. There's a notch that lines the pin. So we need to get it pushed in far enough to get the pin, the roll pin, to drop through this notch. Now we can raise it up. Have a look at the boost valve now. Next we want to get the 2-3 shift valve out to replace the spring in it. So same application. We're going to roll it over. We're going to mash in on the valve. See the roll pin just fell out. Flip it back over. Take a pick. push the 2-3 shift valve out. 2-3 shift valve. I can pull it out and look at it. We got a little spring on the end where it goes in the bore. Put this back in. The notch on the side has to line up so the roll pin can go through. So we're going to reach in and get the old spring. Take the new spring, combed in first, slide it in. Take the 2 3 shift valve with the notch lined up with the pin. Roll pin back into the 2 3 shift valve. We're going to move over to the manual low. We need to take this plug out, so we're going to do it the same way. Just going to turn it over. Push in. Shake it, wiggle it. Sometimes we have to tap it just a little on the cast while we're pushing in on this to get the pin to drop. Roll it back over. Reach in and get the spring, which is a soft spring. We're going to install the hardened spring.
Clean her back in. Install the pin. You can check all of your valves with a screwdriver or a pick just to make sure they open and close properly. It doesn't look like a great deal, a few springs in here, but basically that's what you're doing. You're, you're putting in harder springs to give you a more harsh shift. But the main ingredient in this shift is the new channel plate and the valve body gaskets. Okay, we want to take the 2-3 accumulator piston out. I'm just going to use a clamp. You can use a C-clamp. Use any type. I'm just going to clamp onto it. Press it down. You can see there's an E-clip in there. That's holding it in. I'm going to take a straight pick. Pop the clip out. Release the pressure. Remove the accumulator. We've got a solid metal ring that's in the kit that we're going to replace. We're going to reuse the standard spring that was in the accumulator for this application. I put the new ring on the accumulator. I'm going to set it back in. Get it started. Clamp it back down. Get the E-clip with a pair of needle nose pliers. Turn it around. Slide it back onto the valve body bore. Release the stop. Our shift kit calls for only putting the two lower balls back in to the case. So we're going to drop those in. We're going to leave the other two out. We take the new case gasket, which is the larger one. Lay it on the case. We're going to take the single notch plate that came in our kit. Lay it on top. Now we're going to lay the oil transfer plate on top of that. We get a new pressure plate. We're going to lay it on top. Put the bolts in finger tight, and we're using the short half inch bolts. All the other valve body bolts are long, they're the same length. Okay, these are not final tighten, they're just run down firm. So we can move the gasket and the channel plate to get an exact alignment. I'm going to lay the new valve body gasket in place. You want to bring over the valve body. Take the S hook, the clip to the manual linkage. Connect it in the manual valve. Slide that back in the linkage. Bring it back. Set it down straight on the gasket. We're going to install the valve body bolts. All the same length. Just going to run all the bolts down firm. The apply plate bolts torques at 13 foot pounds as well. Alright, we're going to put the kick down linkage back on for passing gear. We want to slide the rod through the hole where the cable connects for passing gear. We're going to take our hairpin, the clip, snaps right in. We're ready to install the filter. Put a little gel on it. Put the filter gasket on. 
when install the brass filter provided it says front on the filter on all 350 filters so that goes toward the front of the case set the filter on straight firmly tighten the bolts can't torque these because they're screwdriver just good and firm install a new pan gasket sit on a new pan we're going to put all the bolts in run them down to 13 foot pounds as well same torque specs if you're using a rubber gasket or a cork gasket we use B&M torque converters in these units if it's a small block application, I like to use the B&M Torque Master 2400 stall for normal street and strip application. If it's a big block application, I like to use the B&M Whole Shot 2400 stall. Jags online absolutely can't beat their price on converters. That's where we buy all of ours. Now, if, you, if you're going for a stock application, the parts supplier that we provided you has stock converters, but if you want to go with a performance converter, definitely recommend JEGS. The quality of the job you get is the quality of the parts you put in. If you use the best quality parts available, you'll get the best job, and the attention to detail is the most important Hope you've thing. enjoyed our program. Be sure to take advantage of our free, unlimited technical support if you have problems in your build process. I'm David LaCroix. See you next time.